Cheers. Hallelujah. Bride of Christ. Another glorious morning this morning. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, that we gather together through Christ Jesus today. We have Jesus Christ in common today, right? He binds all our hearts together. Amen. The body of Christ. He is the head of the church, and we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Move in our hearts this morning, Father, in a mighty, powerful way. Lord Jesus, pour out your spirit in every home, all those who have gathered and those who will be listening to this later, Lord. I pray your spirit would be poured out. Lord Jesus, in us, ignite us, Lord. Ignite us in our love for you. Ignite us in our worship of you, Lord. We just worship and adore you today. Let's, let's praise the Lord. We three kings, we're still on the theme of God. Doing our favorite uh, Christmas carols. Hallelujah. We three kings of all the dark, bearing gifts, we travel so far, field and fountain, Lord and mountain, following yonder star, oh, star of wonder, star of night, star of royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born the king on Bethlehem's plain, both I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of might, star with glory, beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Still proceeding, guide us to the 
Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lift up your heads, O gates of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. And let the King, the Prince of Peace, pass through. Bring forth the royal robe. Let's crown him with our praise. Elohim. Elohim. Emmanuel in our midst, God in our midst. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, the great I am, Prince of Peace. Oh, I give you praise, my Lord. Hallelujah. 
Father, bless your word as it goes forth, Lord, as a quick and sharp and powerful sword. Yes, Lord. May it cut and divide asunder the joints and the marrow and the bone from the marrow, Lord, and the, the spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, may it accomplish what it sets out that you have determined it to do today in our hearts and in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Anoint us, Lord, as we bring forth what you've put on our hearts to say, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I couldn't decide this morning. Coffee, water, coffee, water, coffee. Are you going to tell her or am I? Coffee wins. No. Coffee's made out of water. You're drinking it both. Yes, but it has an addition to it. Okay, you know what? I'm turning on the light. She needs a lamp on of course branches. I do. There she you go. I look kind of yellow, but... The lamp. On. Praise God Almighty. Branches. Yeah, it does give a little yellow cast. Praise so, God. But it doesn't look as, as it was bright as yes, uh, yesterday. So... Anyway. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, Glory to your name, Lord. There was, there was a very nice spirit in our house right now because that the was... The name of the Lord is being worship, lifted up. Huh? Worship, the worship, I think, was pleasing aroma to God. And the only thing I'm going to say about it is, and I love this saying, that wise men seek him still. Still, yes. And this is so very true. Wise men still seek him today. Still seek mm -hmm. him today. So um, here we are in part two of the very, uh, very long mini study of a, a, a very longer study of the life of Abraham, as you all know, he's been joining us. Um, this has to do with, let's get you a little bit more. Honey, I'm okay. Okay, she's okay. Well, it didn't sound like it there a minute ago. Mm -hmm. Anyway. As you know, we're in the midst of no the climactic, fun, uh, fundamental, formational, whatever adjective you want to use of this chapter 22 in the book of Genesis, <clears throat> the sacrifice of Isaac. And uh, so we, <clears throat> we, as we learned, we started yesterday, the Lord uh, reminds you, the Lord said this to the, to Abraham, that you were to take, he was to take his son and he emphasizes your only son. And you take him to a place where I will show you, and you will sacrifice him there. And we saw how Abraham's faith had reached such a point of, of sophistication. Right, that's maturity. Probably, maturity is probably a better right, word. Thank yeah. you, hon. That's a much better maturity. word. Maturity. Maturity where no questions asked. There was no, you know, as before, and we pointed out before, whenever God made a promise, Abraham always had something to say about it, you know, questioning about, you know, as, as one would. And, of course, God... Patiently. And you know, God could have stopped him, stopped Sarah from, you know, with Hagar. He could have stopped all that. Well, he, he could have stopped, he yes. Could, he yes, allowed it. He could have intervened and said no. Most likely to grow his faith. And sometimes God allows these trials in our life to grow our faith. You know, he could have very, why didn't he, mm -hmm. why didn't he say in verse, in chapter 16, what, what God said to uh, Abraham in verse, um, in chapter 17 and and reentered in chapter 18 when God's promised uh, an heir of his own body and in Ishmael said or God Abraham said let Lord may Ishmael walk before you may you bless him before you and God reiterated no this will be between you and Sarah um and let Anne's points well take him why didn't he intervene when, he didn't when say Sarah yeah. He allowed it to happen. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, it's one of those big questions in to our To grow lives. his faith, to prepare him for the... the Absolutely. As well as that and um, the two nations, right? Yeah. The, it, God sees so far ahead of us. I mean, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't see that. Abraham no, and Sarah no. didn't see it, of course. And, you know, it, I probably didn't question he, it. He lets them why, he, their way. why they didn't intervene. But it's more of a lesson for us. I mean, how many? How, we can all point in our oh, lives yeah. where something happened, and what was our first response? I'm going to take care of it. 
Well, that, true. But our <laughs> first response is, why didn't God stop that? <clears throat> why didn't God intervene? If he knew this was going to happen, why did he not intervene? Why did he not stop it? Because he allows it sometimes. He allows for it. For refining. For his own for purposes. His own purposes. And Again, this is where we talk about before. His glory, his namesake. We're kind of, we're treading on very, very soft ground here and very and and we're, we're maybe going past, past the bounds where god has allowed us where we're saying mm. when we ask questions like this why well if it's to god's purposes and not necessarily thing then it that's god's business and again we keep quoting uh jeremiah 17 you know that my thoughts are, are higher than your thoughts and my ways are not your ways and you know, many things we know that, that, that God works in our lives and the things that God's do. And we always ask why. And sometimes the answer is not forthcoming because right. we are not because to Because we have to trust. We have to trust. Huh. We have and to trust. And walk by faith and, and not by science. As Abraham had. Yeah. You know, and that's why I said it. It's really, that's really important. It might seem a small thing to you, but it's, it's really huge. important. When God yes. tells Abraham to take his son, his only son, and go and sacrifice him, there is no response from Abraham. He it, the only response is obedience. Yeah. Okay, Lord. He doesn't. He doesn't debate with you the Lord. Yes, he has. He has. Yeah. He did in the past. He doesn't ask a question. Right. You know, how can this be? Eliezer is my heir, or may Ishmael walk before you? And what if I, there's any righteous men in Sodom? I think also because God always reveals His character in names, mm -hmm. the names of God, right? And and. By that time, um, Abraham knew him in in different, bigger aspects, like of his character. You know what I mean? So he got to the point where he can totally trust God as faithful, the God that is faithful, well, that, again, the God that is. Again, know. that's what we've been talking about. Well, we've been that this is yeah. a work of it's a progression, right? This is a work. Faith is a work. Our walk of faith is a work, and we all know this. And that's why we have this example in the Bible, this greatest of example. And, and I pointed God, my out, provider, God, and I pointed my out yesterday that God, there will be a point in our lives if it hasn't already happened with you. Well, there's a point in our lives where God will ask us to take our Isaac and walk up, trudge up the Mount of, of Moriah and sacrifice it to the Lord Every as an act day. of obedience and sacrifice. Every day he asks us to put everything on the altar. Because he did. He put it on the altar of Golgotha. He put everything on the altar for for our sakes. And Amen. can we do less? Is a student greater than his master, as the yeah. Lord said? Well, he says in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified that with Christ. That means everything. Everything. And it's hard. It's, it's difficult. It over. It's way easier to say than it is to do. Mm -hmm. We all know that. Oh, well, there's a humongous that. raven out there. There's a raven out there. Eating my cookies that I threw out there. Oh, man. There's less cookies for me to eat now, branches. The birds are eating them. That's okay. <laughs> um, so before we get uh, pick up the study where we left it yesterday, um, I, Abraham has left the young men with the donkeys, with the yeah. donkey, and he and Isaac have gone on alone up to Mount Moriah. Before we start with that, did you want to just show that? Oh, yes. I wanted to thank my sister without naming names. Um... I got my gift. If you're watching, my dear sister sent me. That is amazing. A large print. The gift. Even though of I have really good eyesight. We large were, print, New King James Version. Thank you for my gift. We were so sister. blessed when we opened that up. Thank you, dear sister. Yes. That was, that was extremely thoughtful. It was Very that, thoughtful. Uh, Thank you for your kindness. One of the best gifts we've ever love. got. Whenever you give the Word of God, it's an amazing gift. But. Hmm. Thank, thank you so Beautiful. much. Thank you. You know, and thank you for everyone who sends the gifts and in and gifts and cards. There, your Christmas cards. We're yeah. not big card senders. Sorry, <laughs> we never have been. Um, I send plaques. We, <laughs> Anne sends plaques during the year, so sort of kind of make up for it. <laughs> whatever else, <laughs> kind of make need. up for it. But <laughs> um, I suppose maybe we should get in the habit now of since we have so many dear friends scattered across the world, we probably should. Um, there she goes again. Girls, does your husband ever do this? Like, okay, get on with it. Get on with it. Do the whole hand thing. Get on with it. Because this study is already in, like, a lot of parts. And if it goes to me, will that be an issue? Yes, definitely. Obviously. All right, so we left Abraham. 
he and Isaac trudging up the side of the Mount Moriah. And, and so he, he takes Isaac and the wood. And, and this, the, the top of Mount Moriah is barren. There's, there doesn't seem to, or they either didn't know whether they would find any wood up there, but Abraham was careful in his preparations to make sure they brought wood with them because this was going to be a burnt offering. Not just a sacrifice of this of the boy, but a burnt. He was he was going to burn him afterwards. I know I don't. We don't. We, don't, we tend not to think of that. But had Abraham actually carried out this whole sacrifice, that would have required burning the body uh, as as uh, a burnt offering to God. I know, I know. Hmm. Um, so he gathered the wood when he could. Uh, and to make that fire for the burn off. He also brought a tinderbox. Um, and some of you know that's an old name, tinderbox. We don't have them anymore ever since, you know, now we have lighters and, and various other ways mm -hmm. to start a fire. But in those days, um, flint or it, it, they, they had flint where they could spark. The, but a lot of times they carried this box that actually had a coal, a burning coal, or right. a little bit of a slip of a flame already burning it like a candle. Yeah. yeah. And you use that as your source to make your fire. And it was in, in tinder, but way back in the 18th and 19th century, they called them tinder, it didn't go out. tinder mm -hmm. boxes. You know, they didn't have lighters or anything like that. And you pray it didn't go out, but you, you tended that. So um, they brought a tinder box with, with the flame to start the fire. Um, Abraham thought of everything. He knew. He'd given a burnt offering before. He knew what was required. Um, and he brought the knife that would ultimately be used to do the thing he dreaded the most, to kill his only son. And and so as they trudged up this long slope of the mountain uh, that the Lord had chosen for the sacrifice, he, in his mind, because he'd given burnt offerings before, but of, of sheep from his herd. Mm -hmm. you know? And there's a spent, there always was a, a, it isn't just an everyday ordinary knife that was needed. This was a ritual knife, a knife that had to be blessed, right. usually made of flint. Um, and of course, this is the knife that, that Abraham would have used to uh, sacrifice the animals. It may even have been, although it may even have been the, uh, the knife that he used to circumcise Ishmael with and some of the other men. They, they did Maybe. use flint knives for that, for that particular. They may Maybe. have something separate, again, to speculate. So we find ourselves in uh, Genesis 22. Gen we're going to. One verse, it's almost, it seems like it's one verse at a time. This is Genesis 22, verse 6. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. And of course, so as I said, he's brought the wood and his son. And so he gets up there, and, and, and very succinctly the Bible says, he takes the wood of the burnt offering and laid Isaac on it. And he took the hand as the, the fire and the knife. And so they went both together. Mm -hmm. So again, he's taking all these things. Um, there are a few places in scripture that paints for us a more stark or prophetic shadow of the crucifixion than here. And one of the reasons Isaac has always been seen as the biblical archetype of the mm -hmm. Messiah, of the sacrifice of the Messiah, I should say. Notice that Isaac, and certainly unknown to the boy, was being made to carry the instrument of his destruction, namely the wood that would be set ablaze in order to consume his body for the sacrifice. Isaac was asked to carry the wood. How startling a parallel with that of the Lord Jesus, who was compelled to carry the instrument of his own destruction, the cross. And because of the effects of the scourging he had received, was mercifully given to another in order to complete the walk of death. We find this in Mark 15. Verse 20. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. 
God was demanding a sacrifice to atone for the sin of humanity in the death of his yeah. own son. We call that, and we talked about this, the, I call it the propitiation, Anne calls it the propitiation, or the propitiation, or pithiation. Pithiation? It's not even a pithy, word. It was a pithy saying. Pithiation. Pithy, pithy is a word. Propitiation. Propitiation of sin that God's anger was appeased by this, the sacrifice because he accepted the sacrifice of his only son yeah. upon Golgotha. But what was he demanding from Abraham that would require such a sacrifice? God had told Abraham that the sacrifice of Isaac must be as a burnt offering. But why a burnt offering? By the time of the giving of the law, such as such an offering was considered an offering for sin mm. and as such was to be offered up to god by the high priest forever and was to be wholly consumed so that nothing was left we find these instructions in the book of leviticus chapter 6 starting in verse 22. the priest from among aaron's sons who was anointed to succeed him shall offer it to the lord as decreed forever the whole of it shall be burned. Every grain offering of a priest shall be wholly burned. It shall not be eaten. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. Notice that last line. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord it is most holy. Yeah. So Isaac was going to be killed on the top of Mount Moriah and then his body given as a burnt offering in the same place. Same idea that Jesus gave his offering on Golgotha. Right. The same place where he was hill. killed on the hill. Up on the hill. Abraham would of course be standing in the office of the high priest for the sacrifice long before such an office came into being. Okay, there was no high priest when Abraham, Abraham was his own high priest, and God considered him a high priest of his clan. Um, being that this offering was to look exactly like the daily burnt offerings for sin that would one day arise out of the law. When they built the temple, when they had the, the tabernacle in the wilderness, and they, even before they built the temple, daily burnt offerings were being offered up by That's Aaron right. and his sons with the high priests. But as a burnt offering by the time of Moses was meant to be instructional and a symbol to the children of Israel of not only the need to atone for their own sins, but that such an atonement required more than just a ceremonial cleansing through the ritual shedding of the blood of bull and goats, but a once and for all complete sacrifice that would meet every requirement for the atonement and the propitiation of our sins. And we find this explained to us in the book Hebrews. of Hebrews. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? But in these sacrifices... There is a reminder of sins every year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me in burnt offerings and sin offerings. You have taken no pleasure. As we know this to be true, it still leaves us with the question, why did God require Abraham to offer up his son as a burnt offering? Interesting to note is the fact that burnt offerings were being offered up to God long before the giving of the law. So it's not as if God was asking Abraham to do a strange thing uh, with which he was totally unfamiliar. Remember Noah? And we find this yeah. in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. But up until this point, up until Abraham's day, it was always with an animal, never a human being and right. never his own son. Noah didn't offer any of his sons. 
One of the major reasons that God condemned the Canaanites and the Amorites right. was their practice of human sacrifice, particularly child sacrifice. As I suggested earlier in this study, the enigmatic reference to the iniquity of the Amorites found in Genesis 15, 16, was one of the reasons for the length of Israel's stay in Egypt, as it is a direct reference to the abominable practice of child sacrifice that had so polluted the land of promise. Uh, remember how I said that the sins of the people of the land will there's there's something that happens where sin our sins don't just they're not just corporeal they're and they kind of, they kind of go out they, they 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 kind of flow down into the ground like blood into the ground like lord's the lord's mm -hmm. blood floods into the ground sin goes in there so right. that paul saying that the creation is crying out to be released right. from the sins of humankind yes. Yes. on them and this is a, this same idea because everything has life yeah. It took, it took God, everything, has, everything life. has life. And so God, that's why the just, earth feels everything, the sin. And, you know, when the blood came in, it received it. And it's like, whoa. And, and I pointed out, remember, remember what God said to Cain, yeah. the blood of your brother cries Abel out. Cries, out, cries out from the ground. Yes. Yes. And so we, we, we really need to, to, to have this in mind, to think about this. Um, and this is why um, it was 430 years. It was not just 430 years for the Amorites to repent. It was 430 years for God to cleanse the land. Same idea, same reason. Why did the children of Israel, why did the Judeans have to go and stay in Babylon for 70 years? Yeah. Because the land had to be ritually cleansed. Why? Because Israel had missed 70 jubilees since yes. they came yeah. into the land. Mm -hmm. And so they had to say one year of exile to make up for all those jubilee years every 50 years. Um, was it 50 years or every seven years? Maybe every seven years. Is jubilee? That no, that's every 50 years. That's what I thought of jubilee. Yeah. But it was, um, yeah. where, where the land had to be cleansed. It might have been the seven years. Oh, it's seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that planting for and six then you, years then of planting and ten years yeah. of rest, and then, you know, but they didn't do that. But it was also something to do with the Jew. Anyway, the number added up to seventy, which is why Jeremiah said it was seventy. And the reason was to to atone for and and cleanse the land so that the people could come back into it. Same idea with Egypt coming out of Egypt, but it took them yeah. a lot longer than seventy years to four hundred thirty years. Anyway. Um back to the child sacrifice of the Amorites. <clears throat> For his part, Abraham would not have been unmindful of the hideous ritual going on all around him. Remember, he's, he's a pilgrim in the land. He's a stranger in the land. Yeah. yeah. It's not that he's not familiar, un he's not familiar with human sacrifice. He's, he probably, he saw in Ur, the city of his birth, the Samaria with the Sumerians, and, but he's seen it with all these people groups in Canaan, the whole 25, 30 years he's been here. Mm -hmm. All around him, they're they're yeah. they're making this practice of of uh, right. human and child sacrifice. Yeah. So, uh, like God, why are you asking me to do this? That's right. <laughs> and he, he would, could have asked that, you know. Like, and and he again going back. This is why this is really kind of wow. Yeah, because, you're, you're nothing like this. I mean, we would all would say, "Are you kidding me?" We know. I know how you feel about human sacrifice, Lord. Yeah. Why would you tell me? You're obvious. This is obviously isn't the voice of God. Trusted him that much. It's obviously in the voice of yeah. God. This isn't God asking me to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and again, he wouldn't have been unmindful of all the practices, of, of reminding him because they were all around him, the altars and the shrines and the groves, the sacrificial groves, where the king in the hills, there's a lot of that kind of symbology yeah. um, when it talks about idolatry uh, uh, in, in the next, uh, throughout the Old Testament about and going uh, about how the Israelites in, indulged in idolatry by going yeah. to the high hills and and indulging in all these wicked practices and um, so again he wouldn't have been unmindful he would have seen images he would have seen reminders all around him and about how hideous and how uh, how uh, this was abomination yeah. in the sight of the Lord 
And like us, he would most likely have had a natural revulsion of, of, of such doings, of these things, especially as he was childless at the time and he's seeing them sacrifice their own children. That would have been really reinforced in him. And particularly if the book of Jubilees is true, when it tells the story of Abraham's zeal concerning the idolatry going on in his own family. So two things that yeah. work there is hatred of idolatry and his longing for a child and to see living children burned and consumed and sacrificed yeah. Yeah. in front of him would have been a huge heartbreak. Well, that's the spirit behind abortion. Yes, yeah. 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 Child sacrifice. Yeah, absolutely. You know, how things haven't changed much in 4,000 years. Mm -hmm. And this is what makes Abraham's demonstration of trust and faith in God in this chapter so extraordinary. By asking him to do the thing that would be the most disgusting and horrible to his conscience, it would prove to be the ultimate test of his faith and his obedience. Would you, would Abraham trust and, and obey his conscience in this or will he obey God it's like God saying you believe me Abraham when I told you I would give you a child in your old age do you trust me now when I ask for him back and when you do it Abraham I want it to be as an act of worship on your part he's not asking for murder here he's not asking okay. for child or abortion or anything like that he's asking this as an act of worship that just add a, a, another His full heart a full heart that heart, just add mind, another yeah. kind of thing <laughs> mm. a, a, another um, you put everything on the altar in worship everything gets put on the altar everything. in worship everything in our lives and you know we like to say well you know lord I, I i will no problem i will joyfully do that or will you will you there are going to be times that God will ask us to put things on the altar that will Some not of the make us that we love, that we love so much. That that People, will not make things, us joyful. Yeah. We will be reluctant. Yeah. And it's and so, almost and sometimes we'll say, Well, Lord, you gave it you gave it to me. Why do you want it back? Exactly. That's what like, I said earlier. But yeah, I'm, yeah, like you it, gave me the child, now it, you want him back. Like I but I and I thought you said this, this, and this. Now why do you want this back? How easy? Would How are you going to fulfill your promise if you take this? If you, if I kill him? <laughs> How easy would it have been Abraham just to say logically that's not God? And yes, think about this, branches. It is not God. When God asks you to sacrifice a human being, you know that's not God. And it it was God in this case. Mm -hmm. And this is why yeah. we got to try to get to the heart of. of this is this is quite a mystery. Paul talked about the mystery, mystery of the church. And I the think mystery. a lot of people today, if if they were to hear that, I want you to put your your son on the altar and like bring your knife and your, they would say you they'd be rebuking the devil left mm -hmm. and right, like in exactly. a similar case, right? Exactly, we all would be. They'd be like blaming the devil for this and blaming the devil for. If no. we heard that, we would say that's not of God. That's not of God. That is not of God. But Abraham, what? God told you to go marry a prostitute. Yeah, what was that a, world? Yeah, you know, even you know, that wasn't some, God. That was a demon. Some of the some of the things that happened to some of the prophets. You know, yeah. uh, uh, um, was it Isaiah? Was it Isaiah the one that had to walk around naked? No, Ezekiel, I think. Ezekiel, one of them, had to walk around naked, and another one had to lie on his side well, one, for one a year, them, yeah. like in the public. You know, someone market. had to. The, all sorts of things were what asked of them by God, <laughs> and they did it. But to the rest of them, they were mocked. And you know, like, would we do that? No, we wouldn't. Yeah. You know, but God wouldn't ask us that. It's well, no, well, not no, no. not in that way. I <laughs> I would question would you be hearing from God if He told you I want you to go outside and walk down our street naked? I think I would be. I think I'd be questioning that in this day and I age. Do that. Back yeah. then, but. Anyway, he definitely would be dealing with pride or something. If he asked. Yeah, it would be. But I don't back know. to our text again. Yeah. There's a mystery here. There's, there's. We really have to ask ourselves why this. This is so different from anything else that we will encounter in the, in the pages of Scripture. What happens here is so different because it's so antithetical to how we yeah. understand God and his character and his nature. 
we know how much God hates idolatry. That is the one sin, the major sin that damned Israel in his eyes was idolatry yeah, because they chased after other gods. Yeah. I am a jealous God and I will bring retribution on those that hate me to the third and fourth generation. Amen. Or no, I think uh, to all generations or, or future generations or something. I think that second and third is those that love me. Anyway, you can correct me. But, but you understand what I'm saying when God says he's a jealous God. And that's all he asked of, 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 of Israel. That's all he ever asked of them. That you worship me and worship me alone. The Shema, Stay faithful. The Shema which is the, 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 the creed of, yes. even today, of Judaism. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. That's all he ever wanted. To, and all they did was chase after other, other, yeah. other, uh, yeah. Whores. They were whores. Which is why God uh, not only hates idolatry, but he hates adultery. Because the marriage reflects the same relationship we have with God. If you're chasing after other women or other men when you made a vow before that you would mm -hmm. you would love and, and serve the Even one. Even if you look at a woman. Yeah. That's, that's why this is, you know, the whole divorce is, is so important in the Old Testament and, or New Testament. And why it became such a sticking issue with the Pharisees who thought they could trip Jesus up on it. And Jesus reminded them, you know, and reminding them this is the way God made it. And this is for two reasons that we're to, for the, the healthy, perfect regeneration of the human race, but to reflect the relationship we're supposed to have with God. Mm -hmm. We're not to chase after other idols. We're to worship God in him alone. Yeah. He hates idolatry. Amen. In fact, in all the widespread catalog of sins perpetuated by mankind, I can't help but believe this is the one that he, he oh, not only he hates the most, it's the one that grieves him the most. Yeah. It is this sin in particular, the sin of idolatry, that ultimately right. separates us from our God. Because it is sin, um, because it is the sin that not only denies that he is the creator, but yeah. it denies he exists he is at all. Lord. <laughs> yeah. Why then is he asking Abraham to do what is most detestable in his sight and commit a sin that will surely sever their relationship? Think about it. Mm -hmm. If Abraham had gone through with this, what do you think his relationship with God from that point on would be? Mm -hmm. I think we can all commiserate as human beings that he would be so grief stricken. And of course, think what would happen to the mar their marriage. But he did say like whether you choose to kill this child or not, or to save him or bring him back to life? or No, he didn't say that. He said you can bring him back to life. No, the Hebrews, the author of Hebrews said that that was, he was, just, he was looking back at it. It doesn't say that here in Genesis 22. No, not here, but it, says it does Hebrews say in Scripture. That he believed that God had the power to bring back to life. Right, and that, right. that was a way of understanding why Abraham mm -hmm. was, was willing to do this. Because he knew that it was of God and God... He would had raise the, the child back. To raise up again. Him back. Yeah. How would that what what a picture that would have been had he actually killed Isaac and then God have him res resurrect him? What a picture of Christ that would have been. Yeah. But we didn't get that far. No. But uh, but again, think about how this would not only destroy his relationship with God, it would destroy his relationship with Sarah. Sarah. Sarah and if he'd gone back empty handed and told Sarah what he did. She probably would have died right then and there. Or if they had, they wouldn't have had a marriage. They wouldn't have had a relationship. Um, maybe, maybe. Well, I'm just thinking of, you know, apart from the spiritual aspects we're talking about, I'm thinking about human nature. Put yourself in yeah, Abraham's shoes. Yeah. I put myself in Abraham's well, shoes. Well, because she wasn't at the same faith level as him, obviously. That's why, yeah, as I, I said yesterday, that's why, she would that's why I said panic. yesterday, he didn't tell her where he right. was going because there's no way she would have allowed it. No way. And then if he were to come back and tell her what happened, again, I'm speculating. I'm just saying, but given human nature, I know how I would feel. I know how most of you probably would feel. You know, we've, we've had friends and, and we've seen this. We've had friends, uh, good Christian friends whose marriages ended because a child died in their family. Yeah. We, yeah. it's, and some of you have, I know Regina just lost a daughter uh, last year. I know that there are some. That's weird that you're mentioning this because 
earlier on, earlier, just like 15, 20 minutes ago, you know what image came into my head? What? Oliver and Pam's daughter really? who got ran over by a train. That's who I'm talking Not about. Not even, I'm serious. That image came in my really? head. Of the little girl getting wow. run over by a train, and you just I just mentioned that. it, and we and this was years ago. Yeah, this is years ago, and I'm sure that some of you may know, in, both in your own families, um, wow. or friends, where Lord, is that significant? When, for when you suffer a loss like that, the marriage is the fir is the first thing that there, there's a huge change, a paradigm shift in the marriage. Blame, guilt, so all those things. Abraham used a lot of wisdom. And Abraham used a lot of wisdom. A lot of know, wisdom. But even more wisdom. If you you had you had to have faith and trust in God, unshakable faith. He didn't right. have it before. He has it now. And strength and self discipline, like absolutely, to not be able to tell your wife, you absolutely. know, to have to carry that weight and absolutely. not tell anyone. Absolutely. No, he couldn't even tell the guys who he brought with him. No, which is why he left them behind. Uh, and we said yeah. yesterday, if he brought them with him, the young men, and perfectly understandable, if they'd seen what Isaac they would have Abraham to was up to. It was an old man. They would have had plenty of time. To, remember, these are young men. Yeah. Abraham's old at this time. They would have had plenty of time to stop him. Mm -hmm. And they would have stopped him. Master or no, they would have that stopped him. That is so awesome, eh? And, How he you know, and we, we would probably pat the backs of the young men and say, you know, great, that's great, awesome. Yeah. And and yes, it would have been. You did the right thing. You there, did right? the right thing. And they would have done the right thing. Yeah. But it would have been God's purpose. You know, sometimes. We hinder God's purpose because we don't know. Oswald Chambers once <laughs> said that the greatest enemy of the best is the good. Mm-hmm. Of getting to God, of, of achieving God's best, the, the the enemy, the thing that hinders it the most is the good, trying to do the good mm -hmm. rather than the best, right? The that would have been the good, but God. that wouldn't have been the will of God. Okay. And we go back before we got sidetracked there to go back and said the Funny sin, holes. the sin of of uh, of idolatry mm. is the sin that that leads to two things in human beings. It, it separates us from God and our relationship. Yeah. And it brings us to a point where we deny that there is even a God, that there's no God. And we well, find, yeah, and the first thing that goes is your discernment. <laughs> and we to discern. And speaking of discernment, we find the first one in Isaiah 59, 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. We see, we're not talking about that right now, but you see how important repentance is? Yes. Unless you repent, you you cannot, you mm -hmm. cannot see the face of God, you cannot hear the voice of God, you cannot hear his spirit. That's true. And the second thing that happens, Again, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, Hebrews 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. Such, so, such a little phrase, but so important. A great promise. The whole world is in eleven six. A great promise. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. And this is another reason why Abraham is called mm. as uh, 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 God saw his faith he and called it righteousness. Those that seek him. But the most important thing is that whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists. If you wonder why your family, your friends, the world around you, your work, why they don't listen to you when you speak right. about the Lord or why when they're not seeking God, it's because they don't believe he exists. It all starts from here. Everything going on in the world right now starts from this little kernel. You must believe that God exists. Mm -hmm. And But God did say he gives each man a measure of faith to believe. It doesn't Yes, it does. But that's believe. the whole point. That kernel faith is in you. It's your choice to either believe right. that that's true or not. The people who have, we all have yeah. the faith, but the people who say there is no God, Aren't exercising their faith, obviously. Don't recognize that kernel no. <laughs> faith in them. Don't recognize that God is in them. And this goes back to what we're what what I said before about um, 
Uh, what was I going to say? I completely lost my train of thought. The seed of faith? Draw near to God. Please <laughs> believe that he exists. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> I have always maintained. I had this conversation with my pastor yes. on the weekend. I have always maintained there's no such thing as an atheist. No. There's only those that hold the truth and unrighteousness. That's true. Yeah. Because if what Anne said is true, we know it's true, that God gives every man a, a kernel of faith in and him. He does. And, and of his existence. And Romans 1 says, oh, we only need to look at the creation to know that there is a God. If you, can't, you cannot logically, emotionally believe there is no God. But you can hold the truth and unrighteousness by saying there's no God. <clears throat> I've already suggested that to carry out what was being commanded to uh, commanded by God to do would be the ultimate test of Abraham's righteous faith. But how I wonder would such a test test benefit God? Mm. I think that what is being tested here on God's part is not necessarily the limits of Abraham's faith in his willingness to make such a sacrifice. The sacrifice, while it's important, is not really what is in view here. What is in view here is the testing of a commodity that is far more valuable in God's eyes than presenting an offering as part of Abraham's uh, grateful worship. No, what is being tested here is not so much Abraham's faith, although we do see that here, but his obedience. Mm -hmm. And more than that, we shall discover in the verses to come that God is looking for the kind of obedience that is motivated and perfected by a holy fear of the Lord, right. a fear of who he is, right. the great I am, yeah. rather than a fear of what he can do. Mm -hmm. We know this attribute of obedience founded upon the fear of God is far more important in the sight of God than what we would call going through the motions by giving our half-hearted offerings to the Lord. The prophet Samuel, and we've put this before as well, the prophet Samuel famously proclaimed to King Saul that the Lord's delight was not in was in his obedience, the king's obedience, and not in any kind of sacrifice or offering that the prophet Isaiah inferred could and was being given with a wrong heart uh -huh. and a wrong motive. We find this in 1 Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination or witchcraft, and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry. Notice in that phrase that which we love to quote, but you know, like a lot of things in the Bible, we don't really understand and have the full impact until we go back and we actually read what it actually says. And there's things that we forget about. The Bible uses this a technique where it will give, especially in the book of Proverbs, I think we talked about this yes, in Proverbs, we'll we give do. a positive declaration and then compare it yep. with the negative side. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing here. Consequences. Huh? To obey is better than sacrifice and to listen the fat of, of rams. That's the positive, to obey. But then Samuel says, but the opposite is to rebel. And rebellion yep. It's like the sin of divination of and a presumption as an in inquiry in, or witchcraft, if you're reading KJV. Mm. Um, and along with those those sacrifices, we see this in Isaiah 29, 13. And also rebellion is as witchcraft. We just said that. Yeah. I'm going to have I to mean, edit that out. Now. I mean like. Nice going. Rebellion and idolatry. Those were the unbelief rebellion idolatry exactly because they're you know? tied as we said yeah. earlier about idolatry if you if you're in idolatry and not it's not rebellion. accepting the lord except and in, in you're chasing after other gods you're in rebellion against god mm -hmm. you're you're in that natural yeah. state and we are all born in rebellion against god mm -hmm. which is why our souls are dead and why they we need to be born again so that we are alive to the things of god amen and the lord said because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me. And their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Hmm. 
Mm, and wasn't. I'm sure you all have this experience when you know when you're attending churches. So you you can know you know people who profess to have faith in Christ, but there's no fruit there. And you know they they're saying things they, and do things in the world, and and you just yeah. you shake one and what in the world you know this, what a bad witness for Christ. Don't and you feel like saying, hey, listen, buddy, don't tell anybody you're a Christian. Yeah, okay? exactly. Because you're not you're not a, a very good model here, and and why? Because they draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me. He wants your hearts, not your lips. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. And whatever your mouth will speak is, is as the Lord Jesus says, from your heart. Which is yeah. why, you know, the Lord is saying, I, their hearts are far from me. And it's proven in what they say, and what they do. So if you hear someone saying the same thing over and over... I mean, it's not referring to something, a one-off. I don't, I don't believe that, you know. I think it has to be something that's continual. You keep saying things over and over. Yeah, four minutes, we're not going to do it. Make it. We're ending there. Hmm. Okay. But if you interject a lot of things, then... If then we look at this episode from that angle, then I think we can safely say that the Lord took great delight in Abraham for his willingness to be obedient, even when what was being asked of him cut against the grain of all his understanding mm -hmm. concerning the ways of God. At this point in his long life, it was more important for Abraham to be obedient to the word of God than anything else in the world, including the life of his only son. It's an extraordinary kind of faith, fired and tempered in the fires of all his previous trials and testings, and made righteous by the word of the Lord that produces a pilgrim like Abraham. He has learned to be obedient because what these trials and tribulations have produced is the fear of God in him. Yeah. He's not only seen the blessings of God at work in his life, with not only the protection and provision that God has provided for the wandering pilgrim, and his clan in the last 30 years in Canaan, but he has seen the promise of a child in his old age come to pass as well. But Abraham has also seen the wrath and judgment of God displayed in an awesome way, as he was an eyewitness to the spectacular destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. That is why I have maintained all along in these studies that the Abram of Genesis chapter 12 would have been incapable of doing what the Abraham of Genesis 22 is called upon to do. Right without God laboring for many years to perfect that faith to a point of complete obedience by cultivating a proper fear of God in his life. And I don't need to tell you, you've been in many churches, that there is a lot of times there is lack no of lack of fear of God in these places. Yeah. Abraham did not have this reverential fear in his first years in the promised land which was why he was able to glibly question God whenever, whenever the Lord gave him a promise. Now that fear is a reality in his life, making his faith pure and unshakable so that his right. response to God is not in words but in action. Mm -hmm. And the change of his name was intended, I think, to reflect that reality. And just as God performed this work of redefining, uh, refining the faith in Abraham, so too, he will do it in and through all of us, the spiritual sons and daughters of Abraham. Amen. And we're going to finish with Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. Very important. Can you always keep, that's a great verse to yes. keep in mind. Do not fear, for God has come to test you. So whenever you're going through those testing, God does test. that the fear of him may be before you, to see if that fear of God is before you, that you may not sin against him. And remember, all sin is against God first. Right. And Hebrews 5, verses 7 to 9. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Amen. Amen. You may not have noticed it, but we just spent a whole hour of a Bible study on one verse. Genesis 22, verse 6. 
So yeah. tomorrow we'll pick it up in verse seven. Pick up more of the story. Again, as I said to you, there, there is so much truth that we need to glean from these fields. Sure. And uh, it, it's been an a, amazing study. Uh, just the chapter 22 in itself. I was, I was amazed at how much the Holy Spirit was giving to me to share with you. Um, sometimes, sometimes I'm just amazed at our Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. I, again, Father, it's, sometimes, Lord, it seems just saying thank you is not being grateful enough for, for these for these teaching, mm -hmm. these the, these truths, Lord, that you are imparting to us through your spirit, Lord, and through your word, Father. All we can say is we thank, thank you, Jesus. Lord. Yes, we thank Lord. you that you are our Lord and our God. We thank you, Father, that you have chosen us, Lord. And we have not chosen you, but you have chosen us. Through the Spirit, you have revealed to us the Father. You have revealed to us the glories of heaven. You have given to us, you have revealed to us, Lord, the Maria. gift of salvation that is yes, ours if we just reach out in faith like yes, Abraham Sarah. and take it, Lord God. You. you have shown us, Lord, that that faith will be will be shown and reflected in obedience in the things that we do and the things <laughs> that we say, Lord God. And all these are intimately tied together so that we might be powerful witnesses for Christ in the world, Lord. That people would see us and they wouldn't, they wouldn't, the outside world would not see us. They would see the Lord Jesus Christ high and lifted up and sitting on the right hand side of power who will one day come again and one day soon Amen. will come again. And every knee, when they see Amen. him, every knee will bow Praise and every God. tongue confess that Jesus Christ Praise is the Lord to the glory of God. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you that Abraham Amen. knew this, Lord God. Whether he could say it that way, Lord, he knew. Hallelujah. He knew that he knew, Lord God, and he proved it in his actions, and he definitely proved it in this chapter, Lord God. Father, is our faith refined as fine as this, Lord, that we would actually do the unspeakable if we were asked to do it? But we have the Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth, Lord God. We have the Holy Spirit that shows us the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's his righteousness upon us, Lord God. It's his righteousness that we receive in faith, Lord, that justifies us in your Amen. sight, Lord. And we are so thankful for that, Lord God. Thank you. And we're thankful, Lord, for all the branches and, and everyone who joins us in this study, Lord, and in, in this channel, Praise Lord God. Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing amongst these, uh, amongst these people, Lord God, that you are... You are bringing a spirit you, of prayer, Jesus, yes. a spirit of intercession, a yes, spirit Lord. of love, a spirit of sound and a sound mind, Lord, to all Amen. of us, Lord. That, you, that you're gathering us together, Father, that we may be able to, to, to be joyful and worship you, Lord God, as a family, Amen. Lord, bond, bounded together, bonded yes, together Lord. by the spirit of God and by the spirit of love. Under Christ. Hallelujah. Thank and we know that the Lord Jesus is Thank our head, you, Lord, and we are his body, Father God. And we will lead wherever it is that you guide. And Father, I thank you again for another uh, another opportunity, Help. Lord, to speak. Another opportunity, Help. Lord, to show the wonders and glory of your word. We thank yes, you, Lord. Father, in the yes. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yep. Thanks, as always, for joining us. So remember, he is the vine. We are the branches attached to the vine and move and live through him. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> and we can do nothing apart from him. Amen. Very quickly, you may, we, you, we say this at the end of every broadcast, but you may not realize that everyone in the world is called to be a branch in the vine, but not everyone becomes a fruitful branch. Not everyone becomes in the vine because it says, and not everyone every comes branch in the vine. that is in me. Yeah, exactly. Says, right? Exactly. But that call is out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Fewer call are many are called, but fewer are chosen. Again, it goes back into the uh, anyways election and and pre Predest predestination. That's going to be a round table in the in the new year. I can see that. Anyway, until tomorrow, we love you very much. Love and you. again, thank you, sister, for thank you so much, the sister. Wonderful thank gift that you gave. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll use it. Thank, Thank you, you all for being all faithful. Gifts. You're all gifts to us. And thank <laughs> you for being our friends. To us. And thank you for supporting us. And thank you for wanting to come into the field and glean with us. And thank you for staying ignited Amen. in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Till tomorrow, dear branches. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.